titles. Go. The Reigns down in Mexico. <laughs> Transparent blood. Okay, McKay. President West. An oldie, but a goodie. <laughs> they can't all die first. This is not our strongest show to date. Timothy Oliphant. Doing whippets? That explains a lot. It does. <laughs> so does the white stuff on his face. Oh. Let's do this. Warning. What you are about to hear contains explicit language, adult themes, and potentially disturbing content. The views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and do not reflect the opinions of anyone else, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. This podcast is intended for an immature audience and should not be listened to by anyone, anywhere, ever, in the history of the world. You know, fuck it. You've been warned. Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Geek Pod. I'm your host, Paul. I'm Hugh. I'm Kev. <gasps> you are Kev. I'm Jack. <laughs> it's weird not to have that long pause and just a corpse. <laughs> but well, we um, just had one now, so you fixed perfect. it. Yeah, you so, fixed it. Guys, Good for you. What's got you geeked? And I bet it is an Outlander. No, what? it definitely is not. We're not going to talk about Outlander ever again, dude. After that, I'm talking about I Outlander. Keep seeing fucking ads for the new season of it now. Uh, of course, because we it, you spoke about it, and now it, all of your your devices know that you talked about it, and they're showing you ads for it. It's how it works. All right, so um, moving on from that, I was gonna say I was excited that um, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, is having to sell off all sorts of stuff because his company's taken a huge hit. Now the big box stores won't carry his pillows. Uh, he actually went to the media and said that attacks by by box store shopping networks and shopping channels all of them did cancel culture on us whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean he might <laughs> be the pillow guy but he's clearly not the english guy um but you know I, i'm happy because you, as we discussed before you know he was doing everything he could to get me to shit my pants at one point and him and i still haven't worked that out so <laughs> uh but what really has me geeked this week is i made a discovery so I happen to be where we're, you guys know we're watching the Stargate franchise. Uh, we're almost through with Atlantis. And, uh, of course, if anyone here seen Stargate Atlantis? Mm -mm. Okay. I've yeah, watched okay. all of it. Okay. Well, one of the characters, Rodney McKay, played by uh, David Hewlett. Almost he's like like a super genius, but almost kind of autistic in a way. He's very... Um, socially inept, but he, he's the smartest guy in the room, but he's also the guy who's always going to say something to piss everybody off. Um, but he's not usually wrong either. Anyway, um, his his character has really kind of got a hold on our, our house to the point because Avery is a lot like him. And we I, I've mentioned in the past, we have a bedtime routine where we always say certain things to each other. Well, at the end of the night, after she says her thing, I now say, okay, McKay. <laughs> and because that's because she's she's Rodney McKay in you know eleven year old girl form. Um, anyway, so we were we were looking some stuff up because I, I noticed one of the episodes came on and the the character McKay's sister is uh, in several episodes and I noticed that the name Kate Hewlett came up. I'm like what? And I looked it up. Rodney McKay and his sister in the show are real life brother and sister. Kate uh, Hewlett and uh, David Hewlett, and I didn't know that, and that led me down a rabbit hole to discover that he does regular weekly like YouTube broadcasts, and basically it's all about science, technology. He's big into introducing kids to things that stimulate their mind, and he, he works in all these programs, but he does these like two and a half hour long podcasts every week on YouTube, just talking about technology and stuff. And it, the funny thing is. It's kind of like he's McKay in real life, except not quite as much of a dick and into technology instead of just science, which there's a lot of crossover there. But it seems like he's more technology focused than just science focused. It was just really neat to find out I can now watch this actor kind of being the character that I know of from years ago in real life. Uh, and he seems to be a pretty cool guy. So nice. I'm excited about checking that out. Very cool. 
I remember that character. I I I love Stargate. I love the whole thing. The original movie was awesome. Never saw it. I uh, I'm really concerned. I, I nobody knows what Amazon's going to do with this revival reboot, whatever they're doing. Um, I know that uh, Roland Emmerich really wanted to to make sequels to the original movie and skip all the TV show stuff, which I think is stupid. And uh, I mean, no one from the original series has really been involved in anything yet. You know, really contacted by Amazon, other than a few of them are doing press, I guess, at uh, San Diego Comic Con. Oh. But it's one of those things. I know it's hard to to revive a show with that much history and bring in a new audience, but it would also be such a shame to. I mean, that's ten seasons plus several movies of Stargate, um, five seasons of Atlantis, Stargate, two seasons of Stargate Universe. There's a lot of history there, and it'd be really a sad to jettison all that and just start over. Because you're in this day and age, you don't get 22 episodes to get people to build up the characters. You're going to get eight to 12, maybe 13 if you're lucky. Um, I Man, starting over, and, and of course, you know, this is an Amazon show, so what are we going to get? Four seasons, maybe, if we're lucky. Uh, I'd really like to see some of the characters from the past make a return. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, so what has me geek basically, um, it's pretty simple. Like, as you know, I'm big into history. Emily and I are going to go to Washington, D.C. in October. So we're planning a trip down there. Uh, my dad actually just became the president of his HOA, right? So, um, yeah, shocker there. So you need to write a letter to your congressman if you want to see some stuff like to the White House, to um, the Capitol, Library of Congress. So my dad's former is my dad's neighbor is former Congressman John Kako. So I was like, Dad, why don't you put me in contact? So my dad gave me the number. I went over to his house, actually. Shocking. So he he's like, I was like, so I, I want to go to the White House. I have to write a letter to my congressman, yada, yada, yada. He's like. He literally just says, come over tomorrow, 8 p.m. That's it. And I was like, okay. He's like, thumbs up. I'm like, What's weird. Uh, so I'm over at this guy's house for two hours. He's like, so you want to go to a fucking White House, don't you? I'm like, uh, yeah, I kind of do. He's like, sit the fuck down. We'll have a bourbon or something like that. I'm like, I was like, where is this guy taking me? I'm like, I'm so afraid. Um, he's going to like, touch me. I know, literally, I was like, and we're sitting in a rocker. He's like on his porch. He's like. So uh, the White House. I'm like, yeah, the White House. Um, long story short, I'm getting, right. pro I'm getting, yeah, like usually you get tours of the White House, like with 10 or 12 people. <laughs> it's getting bigger. <laughs> Emily and I are getting private tours of the White House, the Capitol, Library of Congress, all this stuff, wow. just us two. That's all we are getting. So usually you get tours with a group of people, but we're getting private tours and they're three hours long a piece. The FBI Museum. So we get okay, that's cool. So we yeah, get that's really cool. Yeah, the Library of Congress, uh, the FBI Museum, the Capitol, all this stuff, all for free. A catered lunch at the White House. If I get to meet Uncle Joe Biden, this is gonna be interesting. So, hey, do you want to check out? He's your podcast? uncle? No, he's there. Oh. No, he's not. Um, but can you imagine? It's like, so tell me about yourself. I'm like, uh, do you want to go on Geek Pod, Uncle Joe Biden? No, I'm just oh, no, don't tell anybody <laughs> that you'll end up in jail. <laughs> I'll be with Hunter Biden doing cocaine, right? So um wait, are you the one that left the coke in the White House? No. No. I left the Dude, coke. You do realize they're gonna run a background check on you, they're gonna find this, and they're gonna hear you making Hunter Biden jokes and cancel the whole thing. Well Way they to actually go, Jack. Well, they actually asked for your you social security they asked for my social security number and they actually did a background check. For right now I'm in the clear, but like yeah, so when we're down in Washington tomorrow. DC. I know. Be like, well, you hear what this jerk off said on this stupid podcast? No one listens to. I know, but maybe that'll we'll be the key. View. Nobody listens to it. We'll get more views that one week, though. That's the key. <laughs> no. Hi, yeah, it's all the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, hi, like Paul. Will be like, I'm your host, Paul. I'm like, hi, I'm Jack. I'm the one in jail. <laughs> well, well, wait, wait. If they're gonna listen to this one, then I think we should just say hello to our friendly FBI agents right now. <laughs> exactly. Hi, guys. <laughs> Listen, up until this moment, they had no idea where I was. Exactly. They still don't. So, You're all good. But um, what has me geeked is we're going to Washington, D.C., and we get like a private tour of all these famous things that it's just us two, which is amazing. So I've been to Washington, D.C. once. This will be now just Emily and I seeing all sorts of things, and a lot of the things are free, which is not much of things are free anymore in this world. So 
See, It'll be I, fun. Just, I figured what? you could just go to the White House. And I mean, I figured there'd be like heavy, heavy security and stuff. But I didn't realize you needed to write your congressman for all of these public spaces we pay for. <laughs> Fucking shit. Mr. I know. FBI like, agent. Well, like, that's it. Like, it says that you have to do it three months in advance. I'm four months in advance. So you have to do all this shit. They had to do a background check on you. It's like fucking bullshit. So, but it's like something I want to do. It's checking off the bucket list. So I've met two presidents in the past. So we'll see what happens with this. Just so you know, Adam West really wasn't a president. No. Um, Donald Trump and Bill Clinton. So, oh, yeah. That was interesting stories. So I had dinner with Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, which was interesting. Don't want to reminisce about that time. That was awful. And Donald Trump was um, interesting as well, let's just say, when he was in Syracuse. (laughs) Trump came to Syracuse? There was a former lawyer that um, Paul used to work with. He actually introduced him to um, the rally, basically. He's not alive anymore. A hall is named after him at OCC, let's just say. Okay. um yeah so it was fun though it was a good time okay. so i want to hear both of those stories just not now <laughs> off of, off mic geek no pod just uncut. not on this episode yeah. no i know that's a for geek pod uncut <laughs> all right that's what's got me geeked <laughs> <clears throat> kev oh it's me yes um well let's uh, see um we had a rainstorm. Um, <laughs> I had to work today. I don't really have. Uh, I don't know. Um, what's got me geek? What What's got me geek, Paul? What can you think of? You think? You think of anything? Uh, I, I mean, I've got something that I want to talk about, but I'm not giving it to you. Damn it! I don't. I don't really have. I don't yeah, really right. have. I don't have a fantastically outstanding thing that's happened or is happening soon. Um, I mean, the, the field days is coming to Mexico, you know, the good old fashioned fireman's field days. And if nobody knows what that is, it's a thing that all the small towns in upstate New York used to do years ago. The volunteer firemen's uh, volunteer firemen in the town um, would bring in um, rides and concessions and they would have food. And for two or three days, you could have all sorts of fun in the fireman's field. Yep. And all the proceeds went into the fire hall um, and they could use that for renovations or new equipment or training or whatever, whatever they needed. It was a way for them to um, have a have a fundraiser and have the entire community have fun. Yeah. The very most coolest part about the Fireman's Field Days is the upcoming parade tomorrow at seven o'clock here in the village of Mexico. At uh, Thursday at 7 a.m.? They always start Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thinking okay. PM, Jack. Oh, uh, seven. Yeah, PM. Yeah. Okay. Although they will open the field uh, <laughs> around noon to the uh, school, and the uh, the the schools can come down and and they can uh, they can have lunch on the field. So it's pretty cool. A lot of towns don't do it anymore because the insurance is so expensive. Yeah. Um. So it's it's a it's a cool thing that our village still does it. So there you go. That's our still cool. does it, and the big um. The big draw is to see how many uh, plastic beer cups you can stack up. That's 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 a thing. Usually on top of um the big wire spool, you know they flip them sideways, make them tables. And, you know. Let me guess, you've mm-hmm. done that before, have you? <laughs> not in a long time because I'm not going back out there. How many have you done before though? The stacking? Do you have an idea? Do how would you have an idea if you get to stack that high? You're not going to remember it. You have somebody that's sober in your group. <laughs> no. You didn't grow up in a small town, did you? <laughs> when I grew up I, where I'm at now, I stayed in my town. God damn it! You you say no? It's not it's not the village of Liverpool, Paul. What where is it that you're? This was uh weed sport fireman's field days. Oh, wheel, weed sport. Okay, in the weed sport. And I they're, was always they're known at, for rocking. By the way, I was always at the uh, Williamstown field days. Unfortunately, I only got to go there once when I was old enough to drink. But it, and oh, Williamstown still, still does theirs. They still, Do they? as far as I know, as far as I know. What yeah. was that, Paul? I said that mattered there. <laughs> yes, that mattered there. <laughs> we, we did it different, I guess. <laughs> all right. Well, moving all the on. other times when I was younger, I was there with my fucking parents and shit. So, <laughs> hey, Dad, can I have a beer? Why, sure, son. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of that happens. 
Yuck. Um, all right. So mine, which is probably what Kevin was trying to lead us towards, is the freaking new trailer just dropped for Ahsoka. And that was cool. <laughs> holy shit. That was awesome. There was a lot packed into that. And I just got to watch it today, even though somebody texted me a link to it. No, you didn't text me a link. You just told me yesterday. And I had no time for it then. But got to see it today. I've got a lot, a lot. We got to see a lot more than I expected. I wasn't expecting to see Ezra. I wasn't expecting to see a full frame shot of Thrawn already. How and, many times did you watch it? Uh, three today. Yeah. So I haven't gotten to really nitpick into it. But I can't wait. Um, it's a two parts. Um, it's a two parts premiere. Uh, yes, two episode yeah. premiere. There's. Uh, when it's August? August. Um, August twenty third. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't trying to yell at you guys. I was trying to speak through a burp. The, um, the interesting part about the the two trailers we've had so far is that there's a they're they're revealing they're revealing things, and what you don't know is how much of it is just is misleading or not exactly you know even if it's not misleading, not exactly what it appears to be. Creative editing. I just no, really hope. Yeah, I just really hope Ray Stevenson didn't have a big part because if he had a big part, it's going to be so sad because he's not there anymore. Because he was really big in that trailer, that second trailer. Yes. And, um, according to our discussion with um, Timothy Zahn, um, he was perplexed about what would be happening going forward. Um, so uh, I, I don't know. Who was Ray Stevenson and what the hell are you guys talking about? Ray Stevenson is the orange bladed bad Jedi, not Sith guy. Because his he died uh, a couple months ago, and it's still und- undisclosed how he died in Italy somewhere. It was probably the lightsaber to the chest that did it. Uh, obviously, Same. yeah. <laughs> but you have to. You just have to. Like they didn't show you up. Have like to a do anything. Little... No, like um, for watching Rebels, you have to have Kane and Freddie Prince Jr. make a cameo, and like a hair didn't Kane and die. He's going to be in a dream sequence. Did he I feel like die? Oh, yeah. it's been a long but, time. But it's, but but you're missing you're missing you're missing how this could work out. Exactly. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be Kane and it doesn't necessarily have to be a dream sequence. Freddie Prince Jr could just play a different part and he could he just be there. He says he's done with Star Wars, which Liam Neeson said he's done with Star Wars, but Kane and made a his voice made a cameo in Rise of Skywalker actually. Yes. Along with all those other voices and that Mush, yes. Yep. All right. Um, let's keep this thing moving, unless anyone else has got anything else to say about. I do have one more thing to say about Ahsoka, and okay. there's a possibility that Legos let a secret go. That doesn't surprise me. That that shit happens all the time. What did they Lego, do? <laughs> what? I'll, I'll tell you this much: Lego released a ghost and crew. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. That just might be um, synergy because I think the the next Hasbro, um, what do they call it when they when they do their crowdfunding thing for uh, the the four inch figures is supposed to be a, a the ghost, so it might just be synergistic. Okay, but, uh, but they're, could they're be advertising it as an Ahsoka. Okay, uh, well then set. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe they're just using the the momentum Ahsoka has, and you know they, it was a, it was a set that they already had created. People are post postulating that this is a um, a slip. It could be, especially if it's labeled Ahsoka, because they that you wouldn't think they would do that. They could have just labeled it Rebels. Hmm. So hmm. it's labeled that way. And sure. last thing I'll say real quick, the top build cast Hayden Christensen is on there as Anakin. We didn't see him in any trailer yet, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, but there's there's heavy references to him, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a flashback sequence at least once. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh 100% so. from Clone Wars, and she'll probably call him, like, Snips or something like that. Yeah. Well, he, he would call her Snips. You, yes, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been, I mean... It's been a long day. <laughs> All right. Let's move it on to the Players Club. Or guys, is anybody playing any video games, Hugh? 
Yeah, well, I um, <laughs> I mentioned this off mic. Um, I've just started taking Ozempic up at my, my doctor's orders and struggling with a lot of nausea and dizziness and just not feeling good. And I've discovered that uh, like looking at my phone screen makes me start to get sick, like car sick, or even it actually feels just like VR sickness, to be honest. Um, but today, you know, because Steam is doing their Steam sale, uh, I went and purchased the Outlast trilogy. Well, not the trilogy, the first two games in the DLC, because I've always wanted to play Outlast. You know, and I'm not going to get into details of, of what the game is, uh, but I downloaded it. And when my shit got done, uh, Damara had a meeting until five o'clock. She's usually off earlier. So I'm like, I have some extra time today. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start playing this game. Well, I can tell you I've already requested my refund and not because the game was bad, but because I started playing and in this game, it's first person, but the character's head bobs and there's a fil heavy film grain in part of it. it you're, you're, there's no weapons. You have a video camera and that's that's where you see a lot of stuff. When it's dark, you turn on night vision. I'm playing about 20 minutes in. All of a sudden, I almost threw up on my keyboard. I had to like shove myself back and stop and everything and just shut the game off and stop looking at it. I'm like, fuck. And I went and did a little bit of research, and apparently there are a number of other people who struggled with motion sickness with this game. So I'm like, yep, I'm not going to be able to play this. So requested my refund. Kind of sad about that. That's too bad. Um, I'm I'm still dabbling with AEW Fight Forever. Um, I, I'm right now on the hunt for Owen Hart. Um, I've Ooh. been reading up on stuff, and I found out how you can unlock him. So that's that is my goal right now. Um, and if anyone's interested in playing it, the way to go about unlocking him is to um, compete in 100 one versus one exhibition matches. They've <laughs> got to be one against one and all that. Once you do that, you get a King of Hearts reward, and plus then he's available in the store to purchase with AEW Bucks or whatever the fuck they call him. Young Bucks, how many probably. one on how many one on one matches have you done so far? I'm not sure. I haven't been really keeping track. I'm just gonna wait until I, the the trophy comes up, and I'm like, oh, there he is. Okay, Paul's like four, <laughs> right? Probably like six, and they're all with CM Punk. <laughs> well, unlocks the ability to purchase it. That's how they do characters, and that they they have a store in the game, and. Oh. But like the, the it's not like a grind with the currency in there because they make it so easy. Like Cody Rhodes was ten thousand young bucks or whatever I'm calling them now. Um and literally like the first match you play, you get rewarded for like doing a match and it's like twenty thousand. So you can automatically pick him up. Paul, so. you you know you should do. Everybody, when you have kids, you should give chores. Like, so your chores are this week. Do some one-on-one -on -one matches mm -hmm. so I can get my own heart. And so, like, just do 20 matches a day and, and say, I need the, this character by the end of the week. But then they might screw up my my win-loss records on characters. I don't want oh, to screw up. Because oh, it does. No matter if you do an exhibition match or whatever, that, you know how... Hugh, I'm speaking to you. You know, on the bottom of it, it shows their win-loss record for 2023 yeah. or whatever. That tracks with all that. So, and I want... CM Punk to keep his speaking of the, the the win loss on their their little card when they come out. Do you have any idea? Have you read anything about why they stopped putting the jokes on Hangman Adam Page's uh, cards? No, did they? Probably because yeah. it looks like lately. Oh, we're getting to the wrestling report early. I guess it, it looks like lately they're trying to make him a more serious, like dramatic figure. So maybe that's why they stopped it. Didn't they also do funny shit with uh, Kenny Omega? And yeah, and I think they still do, or because I, I recall there was something about when he came out at uh, Forbidden Door. Okay, nice. But I don't know. I, I'm about a week and a half behind on AEW right now. I'm slowly trying to. You're not missing much. Oh well, well, we'll talk about that later. Yes. All right, um, Kev, you've probably been spending too much time outside and in the rain, or dodging yeah. the the rain, cleaning up after it, maybe. Right. Uh, the Marines down in, down in Mexico. Um, Great. Now the FBI knows where he is. Way to go. <laughs> On the country of Mexico. Yes, that's exactly what I was talking about. Yes, and their firemen's field days are this week. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of them. All of them. The entire country. <laughs> um, but so nobody's got anything else in, in the, the gaming section I'm, I'm just too busy working yeah working and working and you, working you yep. know what i do have 
I do have something I want to revisit with the What's Got You Geeked. Okay. I don't know why I didn't say this. I don't either. Why didn't Kathy, you? Kathy, my wife, is almost through Clone Wars. Oh, nice. <laughs> She's oh, right whoa. at the end. She's right at the end of season six. Nice. Oh, season seven's so good. <laughs> so she's going to do the right thing. She's going to go from season six to episode three to Rebels, then Ahsoka. Wow. Nice. She, is she going to finish Rebels before Ahsoka starts, you think? We don't know. Don't yeah. know. She is. She's trying real hard. She's trying real hard to get through uh, Clone Wars. And it's getting tough because the last couple of things she said to me was, I really like Anakin. This is, these are her words. And um, what was the other thing she said? Um, oh, the Jedi Council sucks. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's a bunch of fools or whatever she said. And uh, and she just about cried about Ahsoka. Damn. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to watch. I'm watch I watch some of it through with her, and it's it's tough for me to watch it another time through. Now, knowing you know, knowing knowing the story as well as I do now, so it's anyway. It was it's really awesome to watch her watch it because I remember how I felt when I was seeing it, and she's doing you know she's getting the same thing. Outstanding. Someday I'll get there. The last four oh, yeah. kids. The Paul, last four really episodes of Clone. Oh yeah, the last four episodes of Clone Wars is way better than the whole sequel trilogy for sure. It's kind of a low bar, isn't it? Yeah. The last four episodes of Clone Wars is by far the best. <laughs> some of us, some of us like all the movies, so they don't line up with the original trilogy. But exactly. anyway, whatever. Right, um, well, I mean, I don't want you to start shouting at me over disagreeing on shows. Just... Nope. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's like, no, all right <laughs> <laughs> all right well i i think that's the perfect segue to jump right into Cavs tabletop review Now I lost it. God damn it. There we go. And action. <laughs> All right. So this week I have a um, uh, pick for you guys that I've kind of talked about before, um, at least this series. Um, I don't think I've actually covered this exact version, um, but there's a very specific reason why I picked this. So there's two very good reasons. One uh, reason is because it's a very, very good game. It is very easy to learn. It is a lot of fun. Um, and this is the perfect game for when you have folks that um, maybe aren't sure if they like board games or um, maybe you're not sure if they could pick up, pick it up really, you know, a, a new game really quick. This game designed to be picked up quickly. What is the game? Ticket to Ride. And this is the original Ticket to Ride. Um, uh, big game uh, designer Alan R. Moon, um, phenomenal designer. He's just he's done a lot of these. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you through. Um, I'm gonna read you through the the little synopsis they've got uh, on BoardGameGeek.com. So, with elegantly simple gameplay, Ticket to Ride can be learned in under 15 minutes, and that's no BS. Mm -mm. Players that's... collect cards of various types of train cars. They, can, they then use to claim railway routes in North America. The longer the route, the more points they earn. Additional points come to those who fulfill destination tickets. Goal cards that connect distant cities and to the player who, do, who builds the longest continuous route. There's a lot of ways to get points. It's a really, really, really fun game. You can spend the game trying to block the other player so that they can't get long routes. You can spend the game really trying to connect the, the specific routes, get the longest train, etc. It's it's a lot of fun, and it's super, super easy to learn. Um, we go through the stats for you. Um, let's see, two to five players, best is four, 30 to 60 minute play time. So it's a, it's a fun game. You can sit around and you can enjoy for a little bit of time, ages eight and up and a weight of 1.83 out of 5. I think BoardGameGeek.com actually rated it a little higher than it, than it actually is. 
I think I would actually rate that a little bit lower than that, just because it is so much easier uh, than a lot of games you're going to find. Very, very nice looking game. The cards with the different trains on them, they're very well designed. The pictures are very nice. The stories are very nice. The cities are recognizable. It is The board is the United States. And you'll see how you have to put individual train cars on these little tiny um, outlined uh, uh, marks so that you can connect these different cities. Um, it's a lot of fun. Just a, just a ton of fun. Um, I know I've talked about the game before, so I'm not going to really dive into it too much, too much more than that. Here's the other reason why I brought it up. Today is the second day of Amazon Prime days. It's two day uh, Amazon Prime specials. You know, they do their thing all the time uh, just to make, make sales, whatever. I go on to the Amazon Prime, Amazon.com website. I go to the Prime Deals page and I do a search for board games. This was the very first game that came up. Of all the games that they sell on Amazon, Ticket to Ride was number one. Now, I know you're not going to see this until after Amazon Prime days are done, but they're going to come around after. again. They're going to come around again. And if you get an opportunity to go look for a game, I would highly suggest looking for this. Uh, the Prime Day price is uh, $30.49. Regular price, $55. I have never seen this game anywhere sell at retail price. It is typically uh, a little bit reduced, even at the game stores. So this is the game you're going to find at Walmart, at Target, um, in the different game stores. You're going to find it on, on BoardGameGeek.com, used. Um, let me just see if they've got a price here. Um $25, $20. So you may find a deal on it if you if you look around for it. Very, very, very worthwhile. And as I as I alluded to earlier, there are many versions of this game. So there's a European version, there's a USA version, there's a Rails in sales version, which I have and is very, very fun. So you're actually connecting continents by sail boats instead of trains. Um, and if I do a little quick search here. Uh, oh, I need to spell ride correctly. Um, Europe, Nordic countries, uh, USA 1910, rails and sales, Ooh. as I mentioned, 10th anniversary, Europa 1912. Um, there's Switzerland. There's so many, so many different versions of this game. So you'll, you can find one that you like that is interesting to you and um, definitely add this to your collection. If you don't have at least one version of Ticket to Ride in your board game collection, Go out and get one. You won't be sorry. You'll have fun, even if you love the level, you know, the, the four out of five games, you know, the, the difficulty four out of five. You will still love this. It's a lot of fun. Everybody I've ever played this game with has just had a great time. So that's my pick this week. Um, I hope you get a chance to check it out. Find somebody that has the game. Give it a try. Come to one of our board game nights. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yes, Jack. You. I mean you. I'm talking to you. And Hugh, because you don't have to look at your phone, so you won't get ill. This is true. But motion sickness and trains, I don't know. But I do want to thank you because I just went on Amazon about it. Oh, I, I've thought about buying this game for a while. I mean, I, I hear it's really good. You just That's explained it in a way that made me understand that it, it my the Avery would probably be able to pick it up. So, yeah, I just bought it. Outstanding. It, look at that. That. It worked. It worked. Yes, it it's worked. Totally worth it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. We played that in college all the time during like finals week. It's like we just want to take a break and have some drinks. It's like, let's play a game. And we're like, Ticket to Rise is the game to play. Fucking nerd. I'm, I'm going to throw a little yeah. twist. I'm going to throw a little twist down this game for you. Go out Breaking. and buy a conductor hat. You know, <laughs> the, the black and white stripes, you know, it kind of puffs out a little bit. <laughs> Make that the prize for whoever wins and then the prize that that person gets to wear it the next time you play and then the prize is they get the hat whoever wins gets the hat that's how we play it right now my buddy's got the hat and i think he's got it at his house so then he'll bring it the next time we play and see who wins it the next time nice that's, cool. I hope that's nice and i'm a fucking nerd you dick <laughs> <laughs> because you're the one that's talking about at college you're sitting around playing board games 
Uh, well, during finals, it sucked. Mm, it was like a dry. Yeah, I mean, right. any as far as table games in college, you're supposed to grab a deck of cards or several and play asshole. Oh, we played that too. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yes. Some people don't have to play. Some people just are. Yes, it happens. Um, like I do just want to. Right? I, <laughs> I do just want to say that there is one thing that bothers me about this whole thing that Amazon has perverted with this Prime Day thing. Everyone has forgotten what the true holiday means. Optimus Prime died for us. Okay, that's what we're celebrating. His sacrifice. So that we Stick can have us. Beast Wars. Or whatever mm. it is, Rise of the Beast, whatever just came out. It's whatever the Transformers rising. movie came out. I completely missed it. What the fuck? <laughs> Stick with us, guys. We'll be back with the news. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. till 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. August 25th and 26th at the Vernon Downs Convention Center in Vernon, New York. Event hours, Friday, 3 p.m. until 9 p.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Heroes and Villains After Party for VIP ticket holders. Friday night from 9.30 until 12.30 a.m. Sci-Fi Horror Fest is a two-day genre event with the greatest collection of vendors, celebrities, and unique attractions in upstate New York. Get your tickets today at www.sci-fi-horrorfest.com. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. That was great, Paul. Now, before you turn to your wife and ask, if autistic people have autism, do artistic people have autism? Here's the news. First up, pull this thread as I tweet away. Have you signed up for threads yet? Last week, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook parent company Meta launched Threads. It's basically a retooling of the ideas presented by Twitter and is being pitched as an alternative for folks frustrated with the way Twitter has been handled since Elon Musk took over. In just the first week, the new platform has signed up over 100 million users and looks to give Twitter a run for Elon's money. Uh, we've learned quite a few things in the past week. Uh, first of all, Zuckerberg's meme game is on point. When he sent out his first tweet in years, which was that famous Spider-Man pointing at each other picture, that was hilarious. When challenged in the workplace, Musk reverts to cage match challenges and at one point suggesting, and I quote, a literal dick measuring contest followed by a ruler emoji. Which begs the question, do you use one or two rulers? And if it's one ruler, how do you decide who has to go second and use the warmed up ruler? I, although looking around, I can't imagine anyone here has experience with those game rules, so maybe I'll look it up on BoardGameGeek.com. 
What might be bigger news is it seems that at least a quarter of Twitter employees are on the platform as well. Some just to check it out, others saying things like, can someone check on Elon? He isn't taking this too well. Musk is attempting to sue Meta and saying they stole the idea from many former Twitter employees. You know, the ones he fired? Then Twitter broke and there was no one to fix things. Those employees? Thank Baphomet, we have entitled billionaire fights to distract us from real world issues. Speaking of, next up, NATO Today, Satan. The NATO World Summit is wrapping up today, and it has been a showcase of just how cowardly our leaders have become. While they did begin the process of accepting Sweden and Finland into NATO, they turned down Ukraine's request to join the coalition. While all countries said they would continue to support them in their fight against Russia, they basically said, we can't let you join while you're at war because then, well, we're all at war. So let's get this straight. For years, Ukraine couldn't join NATO because Russia didn't want it to. There were some other changes they needed to make, but they've been working on those. But the big thing was no one wanted to piss off Russia. Now Russia invades and they still can't join because of Russia. You know what this is? It's telling Vladimir Putin if he wants to achieve his goal of not letting Ukraine join NATO, just don't let the war end. We handed him a clear path to get exactly what he wants. He could pull back and toss a grenade over a line once a month. And as long as it's still considered a war, Ukraine is fucked. So clearly, the world is afraid of Russia. Since when is the U.S. afraid of Russia? John McClane would be ashamed. Bruce Willis doesn't have dementia. He just doesn't recognize what spineless cowards we've all become. It's like not rescuing children from an abusive home until the abuser stops abusing. And all the world leaders are hanging out now in Lithuania congratulating themselves on what great support they're giving to Ukraine as their country is ravaged by an insane despot. Can you imagine if we told Hitler we wouldn't storm the beaches of Normandy as long as his armies remained in France? What the actual fuck? And finally, you picked the wrong studio, bub. Pictures have surfaced from Deadpool 3 that show some very interesting things. Not only do we now see Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in his classic yellow suit, but there are also pictures of the aftermath of a battle, which appears to have taken place at and destroyed 20th Century Fox Studios. This was the studio that produced all the original X-Men movies before it was acquired by Disney. This is super meta, super on point for Deadpool, and kind of fucking hilarious. I think I might be looking forward to this one more than any other comic book movie on the horizon. And that's the news, kids. Now, I will leave you with some words of wisdom supplied by our own Avery. While watching TV, she recently said, that guy is like a man chewing watermelon toothpicks. And when asked how animal bites can get you sick, she said, it wood splinters toxic rabies into your vital system. Yes, it does, Avery. Yes, it does. Paul? In other news, spiders have transparent blood. Back to you, Jack? Corpse. Corpse. Corpse in Buffalo. Uh Oh. Okay, he told cool. me. He texted me to tell me he was leaving, and then two hours and fifteen minutes later, he texted to tell me he arrived there. So thanks for that, Corbs. But I'm not your mom. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> very, very awkward. Um, all right, Kev, pick a number between one and four. And then you're going to work on the last one together. <laughs> In one and four? One. Between one and four. One. You tricked me, Kev. All right. Kev, number one, fizzy lifting drinks. What popular soda beverage was also developed as a mixer for whiskey? All of them for Kevin? No. Is it? Is it? Is it club soda? No. It's a popular soda. Take another guess. Ginger ale. No. Does anybody want to take a guess? That would have been my guess. Seven up. No. I was trying to think outside the box because my first thing was Coca-Cola. We all know what that was about. No. I think ginger ale and Coca-Cola both have the same... Creation roots are they were actually medi- medication before they were sold up. Medicinal. They were. Believe it or not, it was Mountain um, Dew. <laughs> what? What the so fuck would I... you mix with Mountain Dew? <laughs> that's well, what I said. Now. I'm like, I've mixed just about everything with Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I want to try this actually. I'm not gonna lie. This would be there was a there was a time in my life when I drank Canadian Club and Mountain Dew and I had to stop. 
<laughs> that good? It's too fucking easy. <laughs> we really it. need a Patreon because this is where we could put these kind of stories. Make people think that. <laughs> All right, Hugh. You... Oh, two, three, or <laughs> two, three, or four. Two. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> That's okay. Moving it along. All right, at ease, soldier. In which state of the United States would you find Fort Knox? Tennessee? No. Oh. Kentucky. I know where it is. It's in Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> You're close. You were close. Very good. All right, Paul. Three or four? Um, Because I, I've made the whole three thing, three, three, a thing in my life is, let's let's go with that, three. Man's best friend. I hate dogs. <laughs> what country did the golden retriever originate from? Ireland. No. England? No. No fucking idea. I hate dogs. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> they probably don't like you either. Uh, um, Hugh or Kev, you want to take I us? fucking hate dogs. You have like seven, don't you? I had no I had I four cats i have one dog oh and that's I can't right stand the one her. dog i open the gate and I, I, I she won't leave i've left the gate open so many times and she just Damn. will not run away you no, guys are fucking just, asses no. <laughs> what the is fuck scotland yes I said, it's scotland did scotland. i say that you said no ireland. i went from ireland to, to, to england you're right fuck way so, to go kev the last one is pretty easy i feel because this one being the history geek there have been three presidents assass um, no three presidents impeached. Who was the first president impeached? So the category no. is commander in chief. So how so it was there have been three presidents that have been impeached. Who was the first president impeached? Rutherford B. Hayes. No. I don't know. It it was it was wasn't Bill Clinton? There was one before him. No, no, no. It was, it was Bill Clinton was the second president impeached, and Nixon quit, so he wouldn't be impeached, right? Yeah, correct. Then I have no idea. No, it's one of the obscure ones from like a while back, right? Sure. <laughs> yes. Um. Humphrey. No, but good guess. Oh, huh. dude, I only know the ones that are on bills, so you've got me for about five. It's. So I don't think you guys would get this. So Andrew Johnson, oh, the radical Johnson. Republican. Whoa, 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 whoa! No, I just was at his wedding last bitch. weekend. What? I was, I, I was gonna sixty-eight. Oh, you were gonna I, say no, no. Listen, Every... I was gonna say Johnson just because it's a generic name, and I didn't think we had a president. I would just throw it out there as a joke. There were two Johnson presidents. Was there Andrew and Lyndon? Oh, you, oh, Lyndon right, B. Right. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, the radical Republicans no, impeached him. Basically, I, I didn't actually know. I was trying to make a stupid joke. I wish I'd actually what said did, it now. For bonus points, what did the B stand for? For in Lyndon B. Johnson's name? Thanks. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> okay. I was about to say, were you asking me? No. Because right. <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to answer history questions, Jack. <laughs> all right so um what happened in history 1962 british rock band the rolling stones performed their first show at a club in london 1976 the hit show family feud began airing on tv and in 2005 prince albert assumed the role of the throne in morocco mm. and um also pierced right through his head seriously brock lesnar is 46 today Fuck that dude. Um, Michelle Rodriguez from the show on um, the movies. Um, your movies, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I she's, she's from. A, she's hot as hell. Forty five years old, and then um, actor Bill Cosby. If he's still a little relevant, let's give him a little buzz. Which we don't want to praise him. Eighty six years old. <laughs> we don't praise that man anymore. So Lesnar is forty six, and his wife is seventy six. Right. Sable's Pretty close, probably, yes. She's aging like a fine Except line, her, her tits are only like eight, right? Like <laughs> They're preemies, yeah. <laughs> All Wait, right, back to you. Are you what? under contract by Vince, too? You're not allowed to say her name either? What, Rena Marrow? <laughs> Sable? <laughs> You know what I'm uh, talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's funny you bring up the three thing, Paul, because I don't know if anyone's noticed, but every single one of these segments I've chosen question two. 
did what was it? I didn't notice that. Years Laura ago, will tell you that she knows though that she caught that. Rena Marrow actually, believe it or not, like when she they came to a Syracuse Smash game, um, Brock Lesnar's wife, <laughs> literally she was with Mark Marrow. So, so was her husband at the time, was, yeah. But literally, he whispered her, "She's shine." I have the hat, so I'll bring it over to your house sometime, Paul. I'll show you or all of you. Literally, it says like she. He's like, "You're still Sable." He's like, "Oh, she's like, oh, should I made a mistake?" But I was like, "I'll take the hat, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. All right. Well, that's a pretty good segue from marking out Hugh. Let's talk wrestling. Okay. No. <laughs> what do you have to talk about? Nothing. I told you I'm two and a half weeks behind. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess that bloodline thing happened. Can you say that about anything, basically? Yeah. You said earlier that we'll talk about it later. I don't remember what, though. What were we (laughs) either? Fuck. Um, Oh, John Cena was in Money in the Bank. I did find out that LA Knight shops at Aldi. So I like him even more. Well, I, I don't know if he actually shops there, but he was in an Aldi commercial years ago. Oh, nice. And this was far enough back that the commercial was square instead of widescreen. So it was oh. quite a while ago. Uh, and I also saw a story today about how um, years ago, this is like 2014, uh, Triple H did a workout video uh, that he sold, I assume. And there's one, he had a bunch of NXT guys there working out with them. They're they're on a mat and there's like a wrestling ring in the background. He's doing these like, you do this oh. sit up, go all the way up. And he goes, all right, you ready to move to the next exercise? All the guys get up. They're like, yeah, yeah. You hear, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H turns and looks at him. Funny. <laughs> but I'm just like, man, even that far back. That's awesome. You know, everyone keeps talking about how he's old and blah, blah, blah. It's He's 40. Like half the roster is 40. Come on. Because his body yeah. is 80 years old, that's why. <laughs> well, no, it's, no, what are you talking about? Do you even know like who we're talking he, about? I think he's confused. We're talking about L.A. Knight. Yeah. Oh, you, said, you said Triple H, I thought. Okay. Well, no, that's where he was about. stuck, his the attitude uh, era. Yeah. No, no. I, I, the, here's the thing about L.A. Knight is he has not had injuries like all those other guys. He is in fucking fantastic shape and injury-free. He can probably go another 20 years. He could. I you mean, know, and, most of them do anyway. Look at, I mean, yeah. fucking Sting just broke his face at fucking like 76 <laughs> years old. But I just, man, you know, if they don't push <laughs> him, just... if it, 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 it's such, it, it would almost be a tragedy because <laughs> what? what? I just, I just saw that match with Sting. <laughs> That's still in my, I just <laughs> literally fucking kiss the edge of the fucking table. Yeah. Oh my God. That was and I keep thinking, like, damn, this dude's literally almost 70 years old. You have no business doing it. I, me, who's not in the business, I looked at that. I'm like, there's no fucking way either one of those you know, guys. You know what? That. You know what? I, I don't care. Because, you know, he, Steve Borden's in great shape. Mm-hmm. Clearly, mm-hmm. he's in fucking fantastic shape. Out of all the wrestlers from that era, I mean, he, it doesn't appear that he, like, you know, was heavy into drugs or party. I, I, I don't know. No, he's born again. Like, he's yeah. all... So he's yeah. in great shape. And you know what? There are a lot of guys on the roster, half his age, who would have missed the jump. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, he he's not... I think anybody in that ring would have missed that jump. Yeah. They hit those tables way too far away. That wasn't mm-hmm. anything Sting did wrong. It's just wow, did you see his yeah. face fucking tag mm-hmm. that? And mm-hmm. every time Jim Cornette goes off, oh, Sting's gonna kill himself, you know, Tony mm-hmm. Khan's irresponsible. I'm like, fuck that. He's doing what he wants to, and he took care of himself so that he can continue. Unlike Ric Flair, who, you know, who mm-hmm. looks like, you know, the fucking mummy, um, you know, Sting's in fucking great shape and he can do it. You should let him do it. He will get to the point where he can't, but we're not there yet. If right. we've seen anything this past year, he still got it. And that's why he the fans go. chant it because yep. they know it. I Come mean, he doesn't baby, even, he's got it. He doesn't even really seem to get like all that winded. I mean, he just really no. seems like he's got it still. Give us the Shivani. Do it for us. Come on. The Shivani? It's Sting! <laughs> that's all I wanted. <laughs> I just get you know, I I never got to watch Sting because no. I, I didn't get WCW and all that. You know, we've talked about how I didn't have cable, so I even missed it more than most people. I saw the the, the toys in the store, you know, because they had like, the, the that guy? Yeah. yeah, basically, yeah. I had no idea who Sting was. I was like, oh, that guy does music and wrestling. I mean, I had no clue. Uh, but you know, getting to see him now, you, you can see his dedication, and uh, it, it's pretty impressive. Um, 
I don't know. Right? Wrestling the past week just really didn't grab me. Um, it was kind of blah. Yeah, WWE oh, did nothing for blah. me this week. <laughs> just meh. And uh, like I said, I'm trying to catch up on AEW. Um, I heard uh, Collision this past oh. week was a banger. Yeah, actually, that's what banger. I was going to say. Y- y- you oh. know what has been good? They're doing uh, vignette segments with um, MJF and Adam Cole. Yes, I saw the first one. Okay, yeah, that's the only one that's that where I, I'm at so far. So far, okay, that that's actually really good. That that's comedy gold. And the, oh my god, they are great together. And when I, it implodes, and it's going to because that's where they're trying to go with it is the, yeah. those two facing off. But that's phenomenal. I just just hope that they're smart enough to drag this out a little mm. bit because there's there's a lot to mine there, and it's good entertainment. And, well, and you, AEW has a habit of not always doing that. But they have somebody helping with the show running now. Who's that? Brian Danielson. He's been in uh, Tony Khan's ear, and I think that's why TV's turning around. Where And, you know, it's, it's one thing. Like, AEW was never known for storylines. You're going out, you're seeing killer matches. They, they had a lot of cool shit. Now we're starting to get storylines, and I think that's because Brian Danielson's in their ears saying, let's do this, do that. Right, Kev? You know. Like, look at their face. I see it. Yeah, it's, it's all about it. He doesn't even know who the yeah. fuck I'm talking about. I do! I'm right with you! Sure, okay. Man. Yes, theater of the mind. Yes, he's he's a big mark too. Um, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, hoser. <laughs> I think he's a big Kevin. A big Kevin. What, dude? You're oh. so tall. You are a tall guy. All right. Um. So this was my failed attempt at stretching this out. Um. <clears throat> so, I guess it's time for the weekly topic. And then in the commercial break. Um, this one isn't as detailed as last time. You get to kill off a character in a TV show or a movie series. Who gets it? And if you want to elaborate, tell me why you want them dead. And the boys will let me know when we come back from break. Stick with us, folks. Looking for the hottest new comic on the shelf or a key back issue to complete your run? How about that rare statue or action figure that you've scoured the internet looking for? Come to Collectibles Galore, located in North Syracuse with ample off-street parking. Collectibles Galore has a huge selection of comics, toys, and rare pop culture items you won't find anywhere else. Comics Galore is always buying comics and toys and will give you the fairest price for your collection. New customers get 15% off their first purchase in store. Collectibles Galore for all of your pop culture needs. Stop in and see for yourself why Collectibles Galore is the king of comics. August 25th and 26th at the Vernon Downs Convention Center in Vernon, New York. Event hours Friday 3 p.m. until 9 p.m. Saturday 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Heroes and Villains After Party for VIP ticket holders Friday night from 9.30 until 12.30 a.m. Sci-Fi Horror Fest is a two-day genre event with the greatest collection of vendors, celebrities, and unique attractions in upstate New York. Get your tickets today at www.sci-fi-horrorfest.com. Hi, this is Craig Palmer. If you ever aspire to be a wrestler, come on down to Upstate Wrestling Entertainment, located at 1121 Glenwood Avenue in New York. We're open every Tuesday and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. until 9 p.m. Come on down and join us. See you then. <laughs>
And that music, that music right there, that was the weekly topic. And that means I'm going to reiterate what I said to you a minute ago. <clears throat> you get to kill off a character in a TV show or movie series. Who gets the axe? Jack, why don't you start us off? Uh, this was a little difficult, but uh, a show that I did watch, changing it a little bit, uh, The Sopranos, maybe, um, I would go with. Uh, because Tony. as we. Yes, so uh, James Gandolfini, Tony Soprano's the lead. Um, mm -hmm. The show is, um, it ends and it goes black. So mm -hmm. um, they play the Don't Stop Believe Him Journey song. So well, all I would do is, maybe you could keep it black, but um, also would you add maybe a gunshot? Maybe a little bit at the end too, because like I would have the credits roll a little bit and then it's just completely silent or something like that. Is it Tony Soprano getting shot? Is it his wife? Is it his son? Is it, is Dr. it his Dr. Melfi? <laughs> it's somebody, but like just makes you think a little bit because I've never um, seen the Sopranos. Great show. Um, but yeah, so like James Galfini was um definitely a good character in that show. So yes, you play that journey song. Is it ended it abruptly? A lot of people, even family guys, Seth um McFarlane made fun of the end. He's like, Oh, we won't end an episode up and then they end the episode just like Sopranos. But uh, maybe he just had a gunshot because it makes you think, is Tony going to get shot? Is he going to live? Is he going to die during it? Keep a little mystery, little mystery with it. So um, there's another more. I can elaborate more on this because Pretty there's good. a there's a movie idea, though, um, I would like to do for this as well. So but um, like I would do a gunshot to see if Tony Soprano actually gets the axe because a lot of people are thinking because like right at the end of the show, they, they're on to him. They're, are they going to catch him or something like that? But. I would go something like that, The Sopranos. Maybe you hear a gunshot, but then uh, maybe he gets killed. Maybe he doesn't. Is it someone in his family or somebody in his uh, mob or something like that? But that's what I would do. Interesting. Thank you. I, like I said, I can elaborate more, Like, but like that's a movie idea, what I would think, how I would want to go with it. But that's another story for another time. I can Makes you wish I'd watch off. Sopranos. Oh, absolutely. It's, did you watch Sopranos, Kev? Oh, it's a great show. Great show. Makes you, I actually watched it. My parents watched it when it was going on, but I watched it two years ago. And James Gandolfini, that's an actor that died um, a couple of years ago. And it's very sad. Yep. Very, yep. very good actor. Yep. I've, I know who he is. Oh, but not, he, incredibly shy, too. And he's literally one of the shyest actors they said in Hollywood, for sure. Okay. Hugh, I think you said you had one. No, I'm struggling with it. Go <laughs> I, I, I have one. I have one and you know it's controversial um I think I think you'll find that there's a lot of you know people on the internet that would that would find my um my character dying off to be a substantial change to the way that the story played out um but I I would like to have seen Chancellor Palpatine actually die when he got thrown down Ooh. the the, uh, the tube that'd be cool oh it should have been that well should've... I mean just saying. They would have had to do something different with the with the sequels. Which could have been an improvement. It could have. That's all, all I right. Got. All <laughs> right. So I like I said, I, I struggled with this because you know we just found out about this a few minutes ago. Um As I immediately does. immediately sprang to mind I could say kill off the the character on the on the show geek pod of dr hugh so that he could have his wednesday nights back i thought i could choose something really controversial in this crew and say the mandalorian and kill off mando because he's the least interesting character in the entire show which is an awesome show about everybody else but i guess what i'm going wow it gives me I, I don't disagree I, well, just, you, you might, I mean, I don't. You might have been looking for an though. argument, but I don't disagree. I was not looking for it. I was just expecting it. Um, but really, it, I think my choice would have to be Fear the Walking Dead, and it would be everyone. Kill them all. Yeah, that's right there with the nuke. One of them. <laughs> that's what nuclear bombs do. Right. Oh, Except that everybody survived that. What the fuck? I don't. I don't. Don't. I don't need I don't need the fucking hand crank turned on that one, okay? 
<laughs> That's a good one right there. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna go with that chick from Outlander. For fuck's sake. <laughs> You don't even know the fucking show. <laughs> no fucking Jackass. idea. No, actually, what I was going to go with was um Madison from Fear the Walking Dead. Keep yeah, her yeah. dead. Kill her off much earlier. The show oh, got yeah. way more interesting once the family fucking kicked it. Um, I she should have fallen out point. of the fucking helicopter. Right. Yeah. Yes. I can't speak to the current season because I haven't gotten around <laughs> to actually watching it. But that that's where I would have went with it in all seriousness. I also was gonna make the joke about killing Dante because the the alternate ending of clerks. Was, oh. Yeah. And if you guys did, haven't seen the alternate ending of clerks, did I watch that? Search it out. Search it out and find it. You have not seen the alternate ending of clerks, you saw the original ending. There's um, an oh, oh, can you find it online? Yes. And I, it's funny, I watched it on I was talking about Clerks. Have I seen that? Yes, you've seen fucking Clerks. You do this every time I bring the movie up. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Yeah, the alternate ending. That's interesting. Um, it's something. And they referenced it in Clerks 3. Okay. But um, basically, it's um, the, 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 the whole store closing thing. You guys have all seen Clerks. Yeah. Even yep. though Kevin uh-huh. pretends like he doesn't remember it. They, they close the store. You know, you're closed. She, he throws the sheet at him. After that, um, Dante's doing the register or whatever, and you oh. hear the door tink tink open, and uh, he doesn't even look up to the cash register. He's like this, and he goes, "What? Did you forget something?" And then he looks up and he gets this look on his face, and the camera spins around, and you just see a gun, and it goes off, and he gets shot and killed. That was what actually, was the, I think that was in the end credits of the third one. I think I remember that. No. No. Okay, I remember that though. I think because they, they, they did uh, talk about you right. The the studio talked him out of it. Kevin Smith talked him out of doing that. Why is that? Because better? it's not better. Oh. <laughs> it's more morbid. Um, I agree, I agree. It's not better. It it was just shocking and it made no sense. Um, yeah. Because the whole movie leading up to that, there's nothing that says that that's how this movie's going to go. And literally, it was because Kevin didn't know how to end. The, not our Kevin. Kevin Smith didn't know how to end the movie. Um, and the studio said, look, don't do that. And it, it was the whole, Hugh, have you seen Clerks 3 yet? Yes. Okay. And it was the whole argument they have in there when they, they have Coe trying to kill him because that's how Randall's writing it. And he's like, I'm not letting you kill me in the third act. And that's what they're referencing. But that's, I figured that was too on the nose for me. So I actually went with something that actually meant something to me about the whole Madison getting killed. Like, Wish she would have died in the fire. Just, not my daughter, the character. So, right, like That's you had I'm... to say, not your daughter. Like when you, you guys said have Madison, met me, right? Person, like, where are you going with this, man? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move it on, guys. What are you watching? Hopefully, you guys got something because I don't. Yeah. Just right. one thing. Hey, uh, go, go ahead, Jack. Go... Oh. Uh, All right, I real mine's quick. Mine's real quick. Uh, Jack Ryan and uh, The Witcher. Really, I mean, we're just. Because they're, they're they're getting released on you know every week, so we're we're just staying with it. Gotcha. Nice. Uh, just uh, rewatching some old episodes of Justified because um, oh the some... new one's coming. Oh, I am geeked out for the the new one so hard for core for it. Um, Tim the Elephant, like I was like, this is coming back, and then July eighteenth, that's gonna be a two part, um, two episodes on July eighteenth. So it looks so good. Uh, so too bad. Um. What's his name again? Walton wait Walton Goggins. I can't say the actor's Walter name. Walter Goggins. Walton, Thank you. Walton Goggins. Is it right? Walton? I thought it was. Is Walter. it Walton or Walter? I didn't want to see. This is where we're missing Corbs because he'd be all all about this shit. This is one we of all his know things. who you're talking about. So yeah. So, but this is a great show. Um, I watched it when it um aired years ago, and then I even bought the box set um a couple years ago. I was like, I'll watch it again, and then I was like, my friend was like, Yo, you know they're making a second, like a another, another part of it. I was like, yeah. I was like, this looks good. So, oh, what was yeah. <laughs> and then um, the second season, less thrilling of um, that show, The Wonder Years. Um, the, uh, so it's a revival. They actually Wait, got a second season. Fred they Savage got a second got, season. Fred Savage got fired. Actually, shocker. 
Um, so he's not even on the as an executive producer anymore, but still pretty good. Like when it's on, like I was like, okay, I'll watch it still. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's still pretty good. I didn't know it got a second season. I didn't know either. So I watched actually five episodes the other night. I'm like, still good. Family morals and some good music here and there. So just two shows. Okay. But mostly work as we know. <laughs> I uh, saw a couple movies this weekend. Um, I fi- finally saw Guardians 3, which was amazing. Um, And I believe everyone here has seen that now, correct? Yep. No? Kevin has not, apparently. The okay. face. I'm well, bad. I'm I, bad. Well, you know, he, dude, you, you were right, Paul, about how good that movie was. Um, best of the three, easily, hands down. Um, I thought personally definitely uh, probably the darkest entry in the mcu for sure but some also, very cringy shit happens in that movie yeah not yeah, like that's... cringy in a bad way but literally like yeah yeah it, it's it's very it pulls at the heartstrings pretty hard uh but mm. it's so good i it, it not not that i'm excited for james gunn's dceu because it's a fucking flaming shit train wreck right now but it made me sad that he left because yes. man, you know I, I, the the other entries in the guardians were were more flippant and it was kind of like you know th- this is good but you know it's not you know a piece of cinema history just like we wouldn't look at like deadpool as being right. it's a classic but it's not a classic um, Guardians 3 showed he's actually capable of putting down a, a serious, dramatic, funny, oh. uplifting, sat movie just all, all over the place. You gonna say something, Kev? Yep. No, I got I definitely oh. have to see it. I don't know <laughs> I why. I don't know why we haven't. I, I don't know why we haven't oh, seen it. It's so no, good. I don't have a good excuse. I don't have a good excuse. Uh, the good other excuse. other thing I watched um was because it's horror, not really my normal jam, but we watched the blackening. <laughs> it's basically a horror movie with an all black cast and the movie poster says they can't all die first. That's fucking great. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh and I, I'll tell you this, it's not a movie I ever have to watch again. It definitely leans very heavily into um, African-American culture. There were definitely references. Even my wife didn't get um, not that she's the blackest black person in the world, but we were confused about a few things and had to look them up. Um, I'm confused. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's worth watching just for the the cultural touchstone of them making a black horror movie. And I know people say Jordan Peele makes the black horror movies. Those are the serious ones. This is more. Yeah, of a, that's a not funny. The same. Yeah, it, this is like a funny slasher flick. Um, it was interesting. I, I'll tell you that. And I, I our dog. There, there's nothing really objectionable in the the movie as far as sex or anything. But it's definitely the first time we've sat down to watch a movie with our daughter or even by ourselves. And I don't even have enough fingers, toes. We all didn't have enough fingers and toes for the number of N-words thrown around in that movie. <laughs> oh, it wow. Was, it was interesting. Wow. And, and I mean, well, I, I suppose that that's like, you know, if you're watching black cin- cinema, that's, that's normal. Like, I've never seen Boys in the Hood, but I'm sure that's all over the place. Uh, don't generally watch movies that are steeped in any particular culture at all. You know, like horror is kind of like free from that for the most part. And that's mostly what we watch that in comic book movies. So it was, it was eye opening, ear opening. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I don't, I don't really have anything. I've had no time in the past week to watch anything. Um, do I get to live vicariously through my wife and daughter who apparently are watching The Little Mermaid as we speak? Why no. would you? Why do you want to see that? I don't. <laughs> no. I, don't. Um, I did find I... it funny that there was a thing online. They were they were they were debating on which teenage Disney princess had more merit, Ariel or Moana, and it said Moana left her island to save everybody. Ariel left the undersea for Dick. What was it? I was hearing um that that song from the Little Mermaid. They like kiss the girl. They, oh yeah, they had to fix that or yeah they they fix call that it, or something. They call it if you would like to kiss the girl. But recently Disney fired that person. I was like, yeah, you're fired. No, I mean, yeah. 
I mean, I didn't care about the Little Mermaid when she was white, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Ma- Madison gave it two thumbs up, though, when I spoke to her, which right. delayed our show. Uh, she she said it was really good. The people mm-hmm. listening don't know that, Paul. That's okay. They do know. Melissa McCarthy, though, plays Ursula, and I hear that's pretty good, I guess. I love Melissa McCarthy. She's, she's great. Amazing. She's fucking she hilarious. Amazing. Except in Ghostbusters. I didn't watch Ghostbusters. Did you guys? Did you guys ever have the opportunity to watch any of the uh, Gilmore Girls? Yes. Yeah. Kathy loved it. She's got the whole the whole. Kristen was all about that show too. And I I I sat right there with Suki. Laughed. laughed, Oh, Suki! I laughed right my right right now right alongside her. It was it was a good time. Well, then you're already familiar with Sam Winchester from Supernatural because he was on Gilmore Girls. Yeah, he was. He was. I mean, um, I don't know what you're talking about. One of the boyfriends. Wow, we we're going in weird places tonight. Uh, <laughs> um, I, that's all I've got. Unless anybody's got anything else to add to this. No, I'm all out of watermelon toothpicks. Yeah. Watermelon toothpicks. Fuck yeah. Watermelon cantaloupe. And, and then I guess corpse isn't here, but you're gonna drop your nuggets then. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. A kindly old Southern man got on our flight the other day and said, uh, "Excuse me, y'all, if I'm." Being a tad slow, it's my first time flying. Nobody said anything. So I leaned across the aisle and said, hey, nobody gives a shit. Shut the fuck up. Good night, everybody, and mega money, bitches. This has been a Geek Pod Network production. <laughs>